How do I tell my deeply evangelical family that I've been attending UU churches for quite a few years, but finally consistently this year? They won't disown me or anything, but they will be sad and disappointed. Christianity is a central thing on both sides of my family. My parents even met at Bible college and my dad went to Wheaton. I've hated telling half-truths, but would it be better to not tell them and not hurt them? From Krista in Minneapolis, Minnesota, United States of America. This one really hits home for me because um, I grew up in a coastal on both sides of my family, both of my family's own churches and grand churches. Um, I'm a granddaughter of a preacher and I'm also queer and um, they don't like that news. Um, and so especially I think if if queer is is not good, I think Unitarian Universalism will also be not good. And so they they don't know that I'm actually here with you all tonight. Um, and for me, I decided it was because I needed to realize who would be able to hear my story, who would be able to hold my story when I told it to them. And some people are just not ready for the words that you need to tell them. And so I decided that I wouldn't tell them until I felt ready. And it's not there yet. I, I, I think the struggle with the authentic self is a struggle that is just, um, it's universal. It does certainly um, um, come into issues around how you live into your, your, your faith call. Um, it comes into um, issues, it comes to four in lots of different places. Um, being your authentic self to the world is always a challenge. The, the challenge is always to, to change, to, to adapt, to be more like them um, and, or the other. Um, and uh, staying grounded in who you are and holding on to that and doing that um, 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 in the face of getting negative feedback is really hard. I too grew up Pentecostal. My mama spoke in tongue. Um, it was a small, uh, unlike um, Lucretia, mine's was a small storefront um, where when they sung and they clapped their hands, the, the rafters shook. Um, shook. Um, um, it was deeply religious, um, um, but mostly what it was, was um, people who really kept challenging me to be, to not be who I, I grew up to be. Um, and that's really hard. I mean, it's really hard to stay authentic. Um, it's the struggle, whether you're gay, black, Pentecostal, you, you, it is always the struggle. How do you say authentic? I, I too have a, have a brush. This, we picked this as our big, as like our meaty question because it's so familiar. I too have a parallel history. My father is a very conservative type of Baptist and had some, obviously had some things about women and uh, what women should and shouldn't do and what the roles of women and here I am, but I, I'd like to try to attempt to address the idea that you people out there, you, you have to protect yourself. If you're, if you're in an unsafe place, sometimes it's better not to share. And at the same time parallel, we want you to be able to share. And in, in this question, the family's not gonna, there's not gonna be any physical repercussions or safety issues, but I, ha I feel like that has to be addressed Sometimes you're in an unsafe place. Here in you use you the you, you world, <laughs> I would like to think that you're always going to be safe when you reveal and when you share. And that's that's the grace. Oh God, it's so beautiful about our faith. But I would never encourage anybody to do anything that made them unsafe. While at the same time, I want you to be authentic. Um, I want you to have the opportunity to live into what it means to be who you are, because that is part of getting to be a you you. <laughs> So I don't know, I would, anybody else have anything on this? Well, the other thing, and it came up in the chat, which is it's not contradictory to be you, you and be Christian. 
Um, you could actually be both. Um, and and um, there are a lot of UUs that are Christians. Um, and so I, we should not lose sight that UUs don't make you make that choice. Um, um, it's one of the comfortable things about being here. I agree, and I think as you as you move into feeling comfortable and and exploring new spaces more, um, I've I've found ways to voice my faith because um, I I knew that I wanted to speak truth uh, as much as I could, and so spending time with people like the Learning Fellows and our lead ministry team um, is is telling me how to speak about these things um, in the way that works for me. If you wanna hang out with us more, there are many ways you can contribute by offering to the CLF and all the work that we do here in many different ways. I think we're living in a time of transition. In birthing, the time of transition is the most painful, the most seemingly chaotic, and the closest to the actual birth. I've been trying to imagine what tools would help, not just me or any individual, but the larger culture get to the other side. Can you help? From Tara in Easton, Pennsylvania, United States of America. I think, uh, I think if you are asking this question as a, as a person, you're probably already on the right path and in terms of the thought toward what does it mean to come out of the other side? What does it mean to manifest a better world on the other side of that transition? I need to hear more on this. It's, it's challenging. I don't, I don't think we need to, um, we as humans need to suffer to have salvation. And at the same time, and I think that we have such power to make changes, big, small, or little. And as we've already alluded to several times, the idea that when you come together in a community that is manifesting a similar or the same future, wanting to make the same future, that we just get stronger. I agree. This is a time of transition. The earth is on fire, the, there are floods, there are hurricanes, there are tornadoes where there shouldn't be tornadoes, there, um, there's, um, um, there are wars that where, where we should have not have had wars for so long. Um, people are being killed routinely to the point where nobody is even talking about it. Um, and this is a long labor. I mean, we've been doing this for years. Um, and it's exhausting. And if you've ever given birth, you know that a long labor at the end of it, um, you're just a puddle. Um, and um, I feel like you're right. That's, that's exactly where, where we are. We, we're, we're in a transition. It is a long labor. Um, and things seem like they're getting worse before they're getting better. Um, and I just think that, that it's important to hold on to hope that in all of this, there is that, that it is important to, to not get caught up in the, and, 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 and not, and, and lose hope. Um, and you need to put in place those things that can remind you of hope, um, um, whatever that is. Um, for me, I have a granddaughter now, and I look at that granddaughter, whom I call the grand diva, um, and I see hope. Um, but it's important in this time of transition, in this time of change, um, that, that you do not lose sight of hope. I'll say one quick thing and then um, we can move on to the next question. I've been learning what, what transitions mean, that, that type of energy that's in a transitional space. Um, it's, it's a place of chaos, but also a, great, a place of rebirth, this place of like imagining the possibilities. It's when you're in a transition, you, you have to start thinking about ways out. You have to start thinking about solutions. And as we are coming, going into and out of pandemics, we've had to, we've had to pivot, right? We've had to change worship. We've had to do all sorts of things. And 
it makes you reimagine the possibilities when you are like, I need to make a way out of no way, as my grandma would say in church, right? And so I'm, I'm embracing the chaos, the energy of transitions. What's the best part about being on a ministry team? What's the hardest part? From Jane in Vermont, United States of America. This, I love this. This is what I love about being on a team. Um, I love that we are all from different places and we have all of these different perspectives that we're able to bring and we can make a worship service like this. Like I never thought this was possible, you all. Like I was nervous coming on here and this is great. So this is hard too. So this is, this is both parts of that question. This is both what feeds and nurture you, but it's also hard, which says that things that are hard are not necessarily bad. They're, they're just hard. Um, and, and being a part of a ministry team that changes and grows and, 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 and morphs into new and different things, it is hard and great, and I love it. Uh, this is the, this is this, I, I don't want to use the word sneaky because that implies negative, but this is the question that on the surface seems simple, but is so deep. <laughs> because I, I think, and I've said this before many times, and I'll probably say it again many times. The greatest part about being a Unitarian Universalist is, our, is the diversity of belief, thought, bodies, all of the things, the great diversity. And the greatest challenge of being a Unitarian Universalist <laughs> is the same thing. That is, that is the gift. That is the labor. <laughs> so I appreciate this question. I appreciate this service. And I appreciate the team that I get to be with. And I appreciate when they, when they challenge me, both for good and bad. When they, when they point out what I'm good at, and when they point out the areas I can grow my edges. So, and that's the same thing for running parallel and it's beautiful. And I thank you all for it. <laughs> I'll also say this, I'm grateful for the covenant. I'm grateful for the, the agreement that we sign either actually sign or we say verbally with each other, you know, like we are going to have good faith conversations about whether or not something went well, right? And because I've been on teams where a covenant is not a part of it. And I think that's important when you're working with the team that you're not going to, you know, combust at the slightest disagreement, right? Like we can talk through disagreements and I'm grateful for the covenant. I'll say that. I just want to say amen to that. Um, I think the, the idea of covenant, which is not just between me and my team, but me and my team and something bigger than me um, is really, really important. Um, and um, I think that's what makes um, this whole process work. Um, there are some times when I walk away shaking my head thinking, why am I putting myself through this? And then the next moment, there is an answer that says, that sustains me. Um, and I, I think it is that covenant um, um, and it makes it work. <laughs>